Hi, this is Pete from Euroversy. On the 22nd of November, the European Broadcasting Union announced changes to the rules of the semi-final voting and the grand final voting of the 2023 Eurovision Song Contest. That night, a Twitter space was held with a couple of fans to discuss what they thought about the changes. We recorded that Twitter space and present it here now. As it's a Twitter space, you may find that the sound becomes uh, poor or drops out at certain points, uh, but we hope you can hear most of it. And we've done a job of trying to edit as much of the ums and ums as best we can. Hope you enjoy it. The semi-final is going to be a phone vote only with no jury voting, although I believe the juries are still going to vote, so there's still going to be a jury semi-final and i'm assuming that's to act as a backup in case the phone lines fail and then the grand final is going to be a combination of phone voting and jury voting as it has been for the last few years and then finally there's going to be this international vote online who will get to give 12 points in the same way as everyone else so there'll be the same weight as one phone voter veronica as a sort of part music academic part eurovision fan is that is that a fair is that a fair description yeah go on that's yeah um what 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 do you make of, of what's of what's been announced today i suppose i mean it's trying to drive up engagement uh which is good and i like the inclusion of other areas but yeah i don't know um i have my reservations i suppose they're quite similar to what you've mentioned as well that i mean are we just going to get kind of novelty votes um well, how are people evaluating how they're voting? People can vote whichever way they want. But I suppose it's kind of, are we changing the criteria between the semi-final and the final? Um, what's the evaluation between everyone's votes in the semi-final then to the final, if that makes sense? No, I think I know what you're saying. What, that the way to do well in the semi-final is now different to the way you've got to do well in the final. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, and I and I agree, and I, I think, and I I think one of one of two things will happen. Either the people in the semi-finals will think, well, we've still got to do a good job because we've got these professional judges turning up at the end, mm-hmm. or they're just going to think, you know, well, qualifying is more important, so let's use neighbourly voting, diaspora voting, a novelty song, whatever, to get into the final, just so we can get that three minutes on a Saturday night, and and to hell with the judges. So, I don't know which way it's going to go. The only thing I can say for this year is that hopefully most broadcasters have picked their songs um, and that maybe those those things will, will change. Um, I I just guess that... Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm really shy, but um, I just guess that now it sort of depends on the big five to send um, really quality stuff because they're the only... They're the only people who would get, like... Like their own, their one and only performance. Just they're not going to any semis. Um, their one and only performance will also be judged by the jury. So, um, maybe because I'm biased here in the UK, but I feel like the big five should send something really, really good. Set an example. I, I mean, we don't know yet. I mean, my understanding is, is that there is still going to be a, a jury semi-final the day before. Now, whether that's because they want to use backup juries in case the phone lines go dead. Um, or whether it's just going to be another rehearsal and another chance for fans to come to the contest. I'm, I'm not really sure. But if they are going to keep the semi-finals, then obviously the big five will still get to perform at the semi. It just never gets broadcast. So the, the judges will probably s- still get to see them. And the judges aren't silly. They get to see what's going on in, in the weeks and months before the contest. So they'll, they'll still have an aware- I, I reckon they'll still have an awareness of what the big five are doing. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's... It's a good, I mean, I think the big five need to sort of raise their game generally. Um, I mean, obviously, the BBC have tried really hard last year, as have Italy and, and Spain. But um, obviously, Germany are still quite problematic in, in, in their approach to the contest and, and how seriously they take it. Yeah, I really agree um, with, especially with England and Spain last year, they were, um, they sort of raised their whole standards up. And I just hope that since they're going to qualify anyways, they're not going to bring in any um, televote baiting songs. Hmm. Let's go back to the reason why this has happened. So this has all happened. It was announced today because there was obviously an attempt by six countries in the second semi-final last year to try and influence how the semi-final outcome would be. Uh, and I think with six countries, I'm sure someone else can name them for me, but six countries basically it looked as though they'd all voted for each other. Statistically, it was proven to be irregular. 
And so they decided that the way to get rid of that was to get rid of jury voting um, in the semi-final. Do we think that's the right thing to do? Could we have? Could there have been a, another solution to this? Uh, yeah, I, as, as always. Hi, everyone. As always, I have an opinion. Uh, I'm full of, I'm full of them today. Um, I mean, the thing is, I think, I think you've already said this piece um, on, a, on a tweet, and as have others. You know, surely if the problem was that the juries were being bought out, the obvious and surely simple answer is just, you know, change the jury system yeah um you know as, as, as others have said and, and you have said is that it's harder to bribe 16 people than it is to bribe five people um and it, it, i think it was just odd I, when i when i saw the notification this morning i thought the um it was a really strange reaction to sort of fix the problems with potential vote rigging instead of just changing the jury system they just got rid of it. It just seems bizarre. And, and I think televoting is, as as we've known for decades, televoting is not without its problems. I mean, you know, we 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 all know about neighbourly voting and diaspora voting, and even talk of countries buying thousands and thousands of SIM cards to try and increase their vote share. So televoting is, doesn't seem to me to be the answer if you're going to try and tackle corruption. All all you've done is is pushed. You know, if if we're genuinely suggesting that broadcasters have decided to to bribe each other into giving votes to each other or I mean we never we never really got to the bottom of what happened in the semi-final two was it the case that six countries got together and said right well we'll all just vote for each other and that will get us all into the semi-final or, or did money exchange hands we and we'll never and we'll probably never know that I think the the problem that we have is the televoting can, can easily be, be bought as well um and you know if you're if you're a country like San Marino with a tiny population, I mean, San Marino traditionally doesn't have a phone vote because it's such a small population. But if it's the case that San Marino will now have a phone vote, all it's going to take is, is one person and a shed load of SIM cards to manipulate that vote. But it also seems like we're not really, I mean, we still have a jury system in place. So we're kind of not addressing that problem head on quite either. No, because I mean, the, the, the juries can still be bought out in the grand final, you know, because... I would say these days winning the contest is not the be-all and end-all. I mean, Sam Ryder has obviously made a career out of coming so close but so far. Um, Chanel for Spain, again, a third place has has sort of made her career. So there's a lot at stake of just coming in the top 10. And again, the juries could still be corrupted in in just to ensure that your country gets a 12 from somewhere or to ensure that your country gets a good placing. So I I don't think this really addresses... The, pro- the inherent problem of, of the current jury system. No, it's a simple solution, but it's not a good one. <laughs> and you're right. I mean, what about the grand final? It's the, the potential for corruption is still very much there. And it was a perfect chance to sort of completely revise the jury voting system, and they, they didn't take it, which is disappointing. I think the big question for me is, is how, how can you assure us when it's been shown so many years since, since we've had televoting, it's been shown that you know, there's, there's plenty of mathematical work that shows that neighbourly voting exists, and we've always washed it away by saying, oh, well, it's just that similar countries have got similar tastes and, and similar styles, so they, they all tend to gravitate towards one another. And there's, there's probably some truth in that. Um, but there's always been a sort of unfairness. And again, as, as a UK fan, I, I find it quite sad because I think this year was the year when non-fans who just enjoyed the contest on a Saturday night were saying, hey, this is actually... We've sent a good song, he's done well, he's, he's performed well for us. And now we're just going to go back to, it. well, they all just vote for themselves, don't they? Especially as, you know, the, the semi-finals now are going to go on BBC One. So they're going to be even more aware that this has gone to a purely phone vote system. Can I just add, add that um, so many of my friends only watch Eurovision on a casual Saturday night. They're not like diehard fans like we are. Um, yeah. But because of um, this year's success, um, many of them are actually planning to go to Liverpool. Um, even I'm not planning to do so. Um, but many of my friends who are... We're very friendly. I'm very busy. <laughs> um, I probably will, I mean, well, my friends are probably busy as well, but I think I have plans already for that week. Um, oh, that, so that is poor. <laughs> that is very unfortunate um, on my side, but many of my non diehard Eurofan friends are actually going to go all the way to Liverpool. And it just shows that um, people who are more, even more casual than we are, are taking this contest seriously. They're willing to travel for it, seeing it live. Um, I'm, I'm just happy. <laughs> yeah. Going back to the the phone voting, I suppose the question then is, I would say, and I don't know what people think of this, I would say the quality of songs um, 
over the last maybe five to ten years has vastly improved. And I would say that the songs that make it into the grand final um, have vastly improved as well. And again, my non-fan friends who watch it on a Saturday will say, do you know what, that was really good and I even bought a few songs. Do you think phone voting alone is going to... I've made the point that there may be more bad songs getting into the... I'd love to think that quality, all, you know, the cream always rises to the top. And I think in some cases it, it does. But, you know, you look, you look back at the, the, the grim mid-2000s, you know, some good songs made it, but a lot of good songs didn't and some rubbish didn't make it. Um, I think I've said before um, that I think Macedonia 2005 is probably probably the worst song of the decade. That shouldn't have been anywhere near the grand final, and it made it because, of course, Macedonia was a country that is part of the Balkan bloc. So, I, I mean, the thing is, I'd, I'd like to think that the cream will always rise to the top, but it's it, it's probably not going to happen. I mean, there, there will be, I think, a handful of songs get, that get through that just shouldn't be there in the final. See, I, I mean, my, my view of Telemann, when it was a purely televoting era, my, my view was always that... A, a good song tended to win the contest. Perhaps not the best song, um, but I think televoting made sure that a good song won the contest. Um, obviously, there will be but exceptions to that rule. Uh, go on. How are we defining a good song? What, whatever it is that I enjoy, Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, though, because we seem to have kind of decided that we have the same definition of what a good song is. Okay, and we've sort of been implying that a good song is different depending on if you're a televoter or if you're a jury. I no, mean, but, but I think I, I think the, the point is is in the days of Gildo Horn or Alf Poirier or Stefan Raab doing well in the contest because or, you know because phone voters you know flocked to, to vote for them. You know I, I don't think we can say that they were quality songs that were representative of the modern pop era. Um, I'm sorry, no Alf Poyer slander here. I <laughs> love that entry. It's like my, it used to be my winner. Now it's my second place. I love that entry. Oscar 2003 was Oscar's second best entry of all time. No Alf Poyer slander I'm, here. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing hands clapping as well, so I feel like I'm, 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 I'm in the minority here. Um, okay, I mean, Veronica makes a very good point, but I, I suppose there, there are songs that maybe score higher than you I, I don't think I don't think novelty songs tend to win the contest but I think in the televoting era they tended to get accelerated up the board a little bit shall we say but again Veronica it comes back to Veronica's point of you know what, what do you think is a good song or a bad song and, and that may just come down to what, what I think is a good song or a bad song but do, you know do we have a view on what what do people think televoters vote for what, what drives them to want to vote you mean like why will people vote for a song? What I suppose the question I'm asking is what's what's the criteria that a person chooses to pick up the phone and, and make that decision? Um, because if you're if you're if you're a jury person, I mean I mean to give a to give a bit of histor historical background, um, and some people know my views on this already. But in in the old days, each jury member used to grade each song individually as a score out of ten, and that was you saying how much merit that song had on its own as an, as an individual three minute work. And now the jurors rank the songs from one to 25, which I think is an impossible task. I can't, you know, I can tell you which songs I really like. I can tell you which songs I really hate, but I, I, I'm indifferent about whether something is 14th or 15th. But the televoter by and large is, is, is one person, one vote, you know? So the juries get to pass an opinion on all 25 songs, whereas the phone voter only has to, I mean, they can obviously vote more than once, but in general, they 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 have one or a couple of choices to make, and I, and I just wonder what criteria people use to get to that point. Um, I would imagine in, in some countries as well, uh, there's quite a lot of let's say cross border fame. So I think a lot of people who, so I think someone who's famous in Serbia is likely to be quite famous in Montenegro. They're quite likely to be famous in Macedonia. So I think that probably we don't really have. I guess okay, maybe UK and Ireland, yeah, but you wouldn't have it maybe so much in like sort of someone who's big in Denmark wouldn't necessarily be big in Germany. So I think I think that's a lot to do with I think there's a lot of you know famous people or sort of cross border fame in sort of some of the um the you know the the, the countries of Eastern Europe, which yeah. probably affects it as well. You know, I, I believe for example that, that Dima Berlan was was quite famous in is quite famous in a lot of in, you know not just Russia but a lot of the mm. countries in that region. And therefore that that would obviously help because they know them. I think yeah. that probably explains a lot of why of sort of of, of the, the voting patterns sort of from with, with televotes. Let's just let's just go back to this idea of why this has all happened. This has all happened because of, of, of alleged corruption between I think six countries. Wouldn't a better sanction have been to say 
these six countries rigged the semi-final. As a result, they cannot take part next year. Wouldn't that have been a stronger message to the juries and to the broadcasters to say, tighten up your security, get your houses in order? Why did we Why did we not go down a punishment route to the individual countries concerned? One word, um, revenue. If you ban, if EU bans them all, um, that's like a large chunk of their income. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that they've taken this step and at the same time open it up to an international audience suggests that they're after something in particular. Yeah. Could there have been a different sanction for the countries involved? So maybe not kick them out, because I, I appreciate losing 15% of your participating countries is not. A, it's probably not a good step, particularly when we're already down to 37 this year as it is. But could, could, could the EBU have done something else to those participating nations that decided to, to do what they did? Could they have been fined, for example? Could they have been... Given more money, uh, given you know, ha- had a higher entrance fee. Would the entrance fee affect the individual countries, though, or would it just affect the broadcaster? I think what they're trying to address is more of a cultural thing, whereas a fine you wouldn't necessarily notice. But I mean, how 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 widespread is 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 corruption? I mean, how you know, obviously that's a big had... question. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's move on then to the to the idea of the, the international vote. We're going to move to a, a an extra final phone vote at the end, which will be the international jury, which will be people from around the world who aren't in the participating countries taking part. G- good idea, bad idea? Is this lip service? Is this money? What, what do you think has driven this? I am very interested to see what kind of engagement we get from it. We already know that there are a couple of countries that are very interested and very excited about it, but what is the global appetite and not just to kind of watch as entertainment, but to actually participate. So that part I'm excited about. But I, I wonder if it's going to end up, how, if it's going to be managed well. I mean, that's the problem. Is it, it, it's, my understanding is that it's going to be an online vote and you've got to prove your worthiness by giving you credit card details, which I think the Australians do anyway in their voting system. I suppose my, my issue is, is that this is a live programme and it's not a, it may not well be a, a, a truly truly international vote when half the planet is asleep and also the i don't know how big the audiences are for for the various international broadcasts i don't know how many americans for example watch the eurovision song contest and we all know that the american song contest was a bit of a flop so we don't i don't know what the american appetite for watching a eurovision five hours behind the rest of the world is 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 really going to achieve in terms of a meaningful vote can I um can I add um from my side of the world? So last year for Eurovision twenty twenty one I was in Thailand. However, I I have lived in the UK since um twenty eighteen, so I also have my um UK number which I use for voting. But it was around three and three to four AM when I was voting. So I so I highly doubt people from um my time zone which um basically Let's say, like, if you give or take, like, an hour or two um, within Thailand's time zone, there's China, um, mm-hmm. Japan, South Korea, the rest of Southeast Asia, Indonesia is at least um, 200, um, 300 million people. It's, like, there's billions um, people living in more my time zone, give or take, and that's a lot of people. However, um, three or 4 a.m. I only feel like the most dedicated fans are going to be up for it. I don't know if it's going to be, I don't know how the rest of the world would help a lot, at least from that side of the world, um, because the timing is so unfortunate. Um, at least in Australia, it's still morning. It's still like a reasonable um, time to wake up. 3 and 4 a.m. Um, was not, but I'm a big fan and I have a British number which allowed me to vote, so I voted and I had to stay up to vote. So, but I don't think most people will be that dedicated to vote for some rest of the world category. I mean, I mean your commitment is 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 probably better than mine um, on on that score. Do we think an international jury or an international vote is is actually going to be representative? You know, we've we've got huge regions of the world being represented in in one twelve point awarding group. You know, we're suddenly going to have a an international phone vote made up of people from you know from, from all the continents. And they've all just going to be amalgamated into one vote. How can we? We're not going to be able to infer very much from 
from, from how they vote. How, how do we ensure, for example, that if, let, let's, for argument's sake, say that the entire of the United States vote in the, in the, in the, mil, in the tens of millions, which I, we know won't, won't happen, but suppose that it did, how do we then, within that one small voting group, how do we make sure that the people of, I don't know, the, the Maldives um, get their vote represented? It's kind of adjacent point to that. Uh, we're not going to have an international community being represented. Um, there, like we've already suggested, there are certain time zones that aren't yeah. going to be kind of represented well. There are lots of communities that just don't have an interest. Um, we're kind of missing the underlying cultural points behind the contest as well. I mean, it's a musical performance contest, song contest, but there are underlying ideas there as well. And that doesn't necessarily make sense in a different geographic region. I think that's one of the reasons why the US version didn't do very well, because it's built on different parameters. Yeah, no, I, I, I do wonder whether there are going to be many countries with an opportunity to vote, possibly, who have never heard of this phenomena and more fool them. But yeah, I, I don't know how we're going to truly represent let a vote uh, in, within that jury. There's a certain amount of negativity that's been expressed towards the EBU today and towards, uh, I'm going to get his name wrong, but C.S. Debacca, the, the executive producer, has, has come in for a lot of flack and abuse today, which obviously I will, I will publicly denounce uh, and say that anyone, you know, being rude to a, a television producer over a song contest is, is, is madness and, and should be ashamed of themselves. But there's obviously been a lot of bile spewed towards him and there's been people like me who've, pointed out cynically the criticisms of it all is there any is there anyone here who wants to speak to say actually i i think this is great i think this is a brilliant idea uh so there's a tweet here uh says i'm only listening but i think having the rest of the world vote is a good thing uh it's obviously a long-term plan and i think what's the difference between a small country voting in the esc to this vote um i'd, I'd say that the, the the slight difference there is that 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 small country gets their own 12 points um which makes you know so you're right so um a, a small country is such as let me think of, you know, a, oh, i can't even think of one now so uh, and monaco for example if they took part you know yes M monaco would be equal to say germany in in a vote i suppose when you combine it all into one giant rest of the world region the point i'm driving at is that that small country, such as the, the, the Maldives or whatever, is going to have their tiny vote share swallowed up by whatever the Americans or whatever Latin America think, because they've got much bigger populations. There's going to be a lot of math involved, um, no doubt. But um, is there a way to like make it like a sort of like a multiplier for smaller countries and population adjusted? Because um, you know, um, the U.S is like what 350 million people china is like a billion ish india billion ish and then there's mm. like other small countries is there like a way to at least um attempt to even out um all the countries that are bunched together in the rest of the world category i mean i mean i don't know i suppose one possibility is that you they i mean you see this you see this at some national finals sometimes don't i think um, Festival de Cancho in Portugal used to do that where all of the regional votes were added up so that they all gave 12, 10, 8, 7, 6 etc and then the total scores were added up and then the highest score got 12, then 10, then 8 and that made up 50% of the votes against the televotes. I hope I've explained that properly. So maybe they might do that where each individual nation, big or small, gives their own gets their own ranking or gives their own ranking, shall I say, and then that's all added up in the 12 points. Together. And in that way, your tiny countries have the same weight. If it's just a straight-out counting of votes, I'm, I am worried that small nations will just get swallowed up by the bigger ones. I'm kind of happy that I'm going to be able to vote. I, uh, so in a personal level, I find it great. Like, I live in Canada. I've been following... Um, been following for a long time now, and uh, uh -huh. and it's always even if I am there, like I went to to see the grand final in Lisbon in in uh, 2018, and I was not able to vote. Uh, not even being, I thought maybe if I'm there, I will be able, but uh, but of course I wasn't. So it's kind of sad because you kind of have, you know, you have your favorites and things like that. Now in questions of um. 
uh, for us in Canada uh, or even the United States, depending on where you live, right? But uh, the hours are fine, are usually in the afternoon. So the grand final would definitely not be a problem. The semis are a little bit more like in questions of uh, being able to see and vote. The reason is that there is not that many people that follow. There is not that many people either in Canada or the US. Maybe there is a little bit more in, in South America. I'm not 100% sure, but there is not that much people anyway. I have the feeling that it was done, one, to get some extra money. Uh, <laughs> I think that is basically one of the reasons. And second is to give a little bit more, um, you know, to make it a little bit more uh, uh, global. Like uh, the like, you know, like I know a lot of of European singers because I follow Eurovision. Because if I just go by the radio, I only knew would know like American. Well, maybe Maniskin, <laughs> but, <laughs> but honestly, you only you only hear Canadian and American uh, singers. Very a uh, little bit of UK, but uh, with uh, with Eurovision brings quite a bit of. Uh, of uh, European uh, and the national finals as well, right? So it's mm -hmm. it's it's nice to hear a different kind of music because it is different. It is mm -hmm. different, and uh, people who are a little bit more open and want to hear more than just American propaganda, it's a very <laughs> good thing to watch. Do you think some of this is to tie in? You, you've said you're in Canada. Do you think some of this is to tie in with the fact that Canada is getting its own contest soon? Uh, yeah, well, I don't know what's going to happen with this. Honestly, I'm trying to find if if it's happening like the U.S. Like you, there is very little propaganda being done. There is little bit. Of, I I don't see anything. I try to find stuff like when it's going to be, where it's going to be, and it's supposed mm -hmm. to be in Toronto. I live in Toronto. There is nothing there that I can find some information. So you know, how are people going to know? Like the American contest, how did people know? There was a couple of ads on on uh, on one of the channels, but it was very limited. So it's normal that people don't watch because they don't know. Yes and no. I mean, it, it went out on NBC, so it was you know one of their biggest broadcasters that 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 did the show. But it, it, yeah. it, didn't it go on like a Monday night or something? Have I got that right? I, I think it's but, just. But, 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 it's yeah, just that people here watch a lot less TV. Mm. Like I, I realize uh, people usually watch things on demand or watch some things on Netflix or they do watch. The only thing they watch on TV is sports and the news. That's right. what usually people watch on TV. Is. And a few channels, uh, a few programs who have already been there for a while. So people know about it, you know, like, yes, they will they will watch The Voice or The X Factor or Survivor or, you know, MasterChef, things who are very well known. But for mm. something to start, it's going to take mm. a few years. Just um, to jump in there, um, there are a couple of interesting points raised there. First of all, with my kind of researcher hat on, I think it's important to highlight that um, Canada has different radio rules to many mm -hmm. other countries. So there are differences in what... Um, they're allowed to broadcast. Uh, it has to be proportional uh, to Canadian content. Um, Do Dr. Scream here is not declaring that she has a Canadian husband here, Charlotte. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, not at all. Um, so, so I know what it's like to listen to radio in Canada as well. <laughs> um, but also, the, the kind of the, the programs that you mentioned of sports um, and the voice, well, <laughs> sports we always get at different time zones we've got the football world cup going right now at interesting times for us in europe um and people still watch that well, mm -hmm. yeah likewise um we know that uh, the final of eurovision is the biggest non-sporting contest live event that people actually tune into so there is presidents there um, and the shows like The Voice, they also engage in televote. So we're seeing kind of interesting patterns um, that could suggest that it's a positive move. Mm. I, I think basically they want to also to have more 
the TV stations maybe to show it. That's the thing that I don't know. We had, uh, I mean, as long as I've been living here, we had one year, two years that it was shown, but it was not shown live. The it was on television, but in the evening. So they uh, they showed it on TV, but it was it was done. Like for me, it didn't have any interest because. <laughs> I want to see it live. This is interesting to watch it live and to know who goes or or doesn't go. So yeah. I I didn't see, they didn't have as many viewers because I'm like why are they doing in the evening when we already know who won, you know? Yeah. Unless you're away from social media. So maybe this year or or next year, I mean on the 23, maybe they're going to try to get some more uh, TV channels to yeah. to do it live because I think the Americans used to broadcast it on a on a very little known cable channel that had very few and then and then they lost the rights to broadcast it so I don't know where the the Americans watch it but I think the Americans have got a fairly difficult idea of what the Eurovision is having had the American Song Contest I'm just going to move things on a little bit just to a slightly different topic sure. um, Simeon uh, has shared a tweet from somebody else. Um, and it's 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 how fans react. So Eurovision is when there's a jury. No, we've got to abolish the jury. This song, that song got so robbed. And then Eurofans when there's no jury. No, no, we've got to bring the jury back. This this that song was would get robbed. Do you think it's the case that Eurovision fans are just very bad at dealing with change, and they sort of social media being the the echo chamber that it is that we just like to have a bit of a whinge when these things come along. And then ultimately, in May, we will do our best to, to, to get involved as much as we can. I'm, I'm in Liverpool. Uh, I live in Liverpool. I will be in that Euro village every day until three weeks after it ends, regardless of what I actually feel about this voting system. Is it just the case that, in the grand scheme of things, this, this actually doesn't matter and, and that we, we'll all just crack on with it anyway? Yeah, I think so. But I think at the same time, I, I think a lot of us will actually have breaking points. So, for example... You know, I, I, I mean, I'm not one of these people who throws these toys out of the pram and says things like, "I'm never going to, I'm never going to watch again." But, mm. you know, I, I sort of think if there was ever, if they were ever going to bring back 100 percent televoting in the grand final, I'd be like, "I'm not, I'm not really sure if I'm the 2000s again." You know? Mm. Yeah. Um, that's kind of that's kind of my view. I think I think that that I mean, and I thought that that tweet earlier on from again, again, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, so sorry, but Sit Sitze Backer mm. was 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 almost kind of, I, I don't think it was meant to be arrogant, but to me it sounded quite like, well, we'll keep changing it, and you won't like it, but you'll keep watching. And maybe that, maybe I interpreted it I'm, wrong. I'm, I'm just going to find that tweet now to, to read out to people, um, just for anyone who hasn't seen it. Um, so, uh, Sietze, I'm so sorry that I got his name wrong there. Uh, Sietze, uh, said, um, and he is uh, the executive producer of Eurovision in 2021, and he said to all Eurovision fans, Abolish, we abolished the language rule and the orchestra. We introduced the semi-finals and then we introduced another one. We reintroduced the juries. We changed where the voting was presented. We let Australia join. And the contest is still here, stronger than ever. Have a little faith. Is, is he suggesting that every time we make a change, that the existence of the contest means that it was a positive choice? Yeah, I mean, I just kind of felt it was like, we'll keep changing it and you'll keep watching. And it's like, I, I, maybe I interpreted it wrong. I, I, I just kind of, that's how I read it. And, because I, I mean, I, I'm sure most of you will agree. Not every change has been positive. So, I mean, lots of them have been, but not everyone. Um, and I think I, I honestly believe there is uh, uh, some fans who who will get to a point one day I go, well, actually, no. It's now so far away from the contest I knew when I grew up with and I loved. Mm. I don't think I'm interested anymore. I, I, I think it's more. I, I think there's two things. I think one is that historically there have been. You know, I mean, for the first 20 years, we went through how many different voting systems before we finally got to the 12 point system. So change has always been a feature of the contest. And, and we've had many failed experiments. I, you know, I think we can all agree that uh, for the, you know, the 1993 qualification for Mill Street competition was was probably not a good idea. The 1996 qualifying round done on cassettes was was definitely a bad idea and actually annoyed Germany so much that they threatened to pull out the competition. So to, to say that every change we make is, is a good one, I, I don't think I agree with that. And I think there's many of them that have, that have failed on my two semifinals. Yeah, I'd agree that that's actually a much fairer way than 28 songs battling for 10 places. But yeah, I, I, I think 
the you know the Eurovision history is is littered with failed experiments, um, and they have threatened the success of the contest. And I think people forget that the 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 nineties and the the thousands, you know, were, were not a, a good time for the contest. Uh, just continue on with that. Uh, I think last well, it was last night for me in Australia. Uh, I'm from Australia from Motor Vision, and uh, it was just before going to bed, like finding out the news. And I think initially it was a bit of shock, and I think uh, online just seeing all the most of the um, the comments. I think it was more to do with, mm. for me, um, that we didn't get a proper explanation over the voting problems with the jury. Like, we didn't get mm. whether there was a full investigation, but we weren't told about it. And then suddenly this knee-jerk reaction happens. Um, I think it was initially a shock, but then, like, waking up uh, this morning and just sleeping on it a little bit. Um, I think, yeah, definitely the international uh, voting, I thought, was a really good idea. Adding on with what Ada said, broadening the brand of the contest, um, I think, is uh, a long-term strategy that we've got from uh, Martin Usado. Um, yeah. So that's definitely um, something that will gain traction over the years uh, with more bro- more broadcasters hopefully showing the contest live. Uh, but I think the news with the, um, the voting, um, as an Aussie, um, we have never won a televote. So technically, our... Uh, semi-final wins in 2016, 2019 uh, wouldn't have occurred. Um, and in 2017, uh, Isaiah um, didn't make the top 10 uh, in the televote for the semi-final, but then ended up ninth in the grand final and our third best result in the contest. So I just mm. thought getting rid of the, the jury in the semi-final, but then keeping in the grand final, um, to me, doesn't make a lot of sense. I think um, it's just a bit of a knee-jerk reaction. Uh, but I'm all for like trying things out, like you said. Like tr- Eurovision is very trial and error, and uh, mistakes have been made in the past, but they do um, manage to uh, change things and adjust over time. This is from uh, David, uh, who's listening and has been tweeting along. Uh, he says, uh, "I'm happy with the changes. We are coming up to the 70th anniversary in a few years, and we need to bring in new people so its legacy can continue. Especially with Russia not being involved, I don't believe these changes will make the contest go back to the early 2000s." What What do people think of that? Do we think, uh, you know, do, do we think phone voting is going to increase the amount of novelty? Our broadcaster is going to change their tack. I suppose the question is, what matters to a broadcaster? Is it winning the contest or is it just getting to the final and getting that three minutes of exposure on a Saturday night? Because if you're, you know, you if you want to get broadcast to a, a UK audience, it's not going to happen on a Tuesday evening on BBC Four, but a Saturday night on, on BBC One is, is beneficial for you. So do broadcasters change their tack and try and stand out more in funny ways to attract phone votes or do they, do they carry on with what I think has been an incredibly high standard for the last 10 years? Um, so just, I think, I think the one thing that maybe gives me some comfort um, and hopefully is preventing a complete return to the 2000s is the fact that, you know, I, I, the one semi-final system, thankfully, is not coming back. And as mm-hmm. you, you've already said 28, 28 songs going for 10 places just was wrong. And I think, you know, I, I mean, I had a real beef with the one semi-final system because I think you had good songs being left behind in the semis, whereas you had, you know, some rather poor stuff in making it directly to the grand final. So... My hope is that at least it it probably won't get as bad as it was. But I think countries will inevitably go into the contest saying, "Well, we don't want to win because we we don't have the money, but we want to get you know get that Saturday night exposure." So we throw everything at our semi final performance, mm. and, you know, and they don't really care what the juries think. Um, they just want to get the Saturday night. So I think you know, I, I'm I'm trying to kind of not be overly negative, but it's hard not to be. That it's 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 that it's not going to go back to the sort of novelty, but yeah, like I said, there is there is some comfort from the fact that it's 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 not a complete return to the to the days of the mid two thousands. I think the big problem with with the one semi final thing was that the assumption was that if you've come in the top ten the year before, you were rewarded with a place in the final the next year. Now there's pros and cons to that, but to me the biggest con is the assumption there is is that the quality of that country is going to be maintained, and and I suppose the analogy is that. You are a football team going into the World Cup. You are very good. In two years' time at the Euros, you will also be very good. Um, but Eurovision doesn't work like that. You can, you know, I mean, Christa Bjorkman knows only too well, you can win it one year and crash out the next. Um, and, and so I think the idea of giving the top 10 a beneficial place 
didn't maintain the quality threshold, as you've said, there were, there were bad songs that got into those automatic top 10 spots. So I think the one semi-final thing going, and I, again, I think the the idea is, is that Eurovision is, is paved with, with sort of failed experiments um, all the way along the way, and it's managed to somehow, in, in some years, limp along, but it's managed to carry on and be better than ever. What do you think casual viewers care about? The, the people who watch us on a Saturday night, the people who have a Eurovision party and then get on with their lives and don't try to serve virtual networks so they can watch the Latvian quarterfinals on a, on a January Saturday night. What, what do you think the, the regular... Uh, that's probably the wrong word. I'm sorry to all the fans out there. What's the um, what do you think the the, uh, the 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 casual viewer makes of us? Do you think they care? Um, they don't. I've asked a few of my friends who don't seriously watch it, and many people are just like, "Oh, I'm voting Moldova because it's such a fun song." And other person's like, "I voted Serbia." They don't. They can't even remember the country. But they're like, "This thing just seems so." Um, so strange. I don't even know what it is, so I'm gonna vote for it. And they voted for Serbia because they don't know what it is. Um, but because I also go to medical school, one of my um lectures are like I voted for Serbia because of that line about um the liver, spleen, and autonomic nervous system. So they voted <laughs> for Serbia, but obviously they don't care about what happens. Um on 364 days outside the contest they're just like voting because on the moment on that night of the grand final something appealed to them i i can honestly tell you that my medical school lecturers could not give a damn about my opinions of scott fitzgerald um <laughs> so uh that we went we went to very different medical schools i i i sort of think one of the great shames is is whether televoting will sort of lower the quality of the grand final whether good songs will miss out and, and um i'm just gonna again th- thanks simian <clears throat> for the tweet isn't um, secretly simian's just um, tweeted is sorry secretly, not. sorry big pardon simian's just tweeted and again if i'm pronouncing people's names wrong please do call me out on it because i'm, I'm uh, um uh, isn't isn't secretly part of the charm of eurovision but it sometimes includes the odd quirky or novelty song whilst an image we all try to shake when trying to convince people that the contest is good a couple of left field or novelty songs are, are an important part of it how many is too, how many is too many this is the thing that i said earlier that we have to think about what quality is and what's good because what we might see as a novelty song is a quality song for someone else with a different cultural context or with a different genre appreciation mm. but I'm, but I'm, I'm thinking veronica about the, the casual viewer who only watches it on a saturday night and they are the bulk of the viewers that's you know the, those people need to be attracted to the contest yeah and they're gonna like the dust and the turkey and then the hard metal and then the oh this is different this is breaking the rules so i'm gonna vote for that and i suppose, and I suppose that's the point i'm making is that they they are the, the people who i'm not gonna say they matter more than the fans but they are the people who make up the lion's share of the, of the viewing audience um and I think a lot of them aren't going to care all that much about the mechanics of, of who's voted for when on what day com- compared to quite so much as we are. I suppose the shame from my point of view is, is that when, when, when someone comes up to me and goes, oh, Eurovision's a pile of shit. Who is that Ukrainian person in the, in the tinfoil? And, and obviously, whenever there's a clip show or a montage, we, we see endless clips of, um, um, you know, an overweight Finnish guy in a stripy T-shirt or we see the Herre brothers or, or whatever. Are we okay letting the casual viewers sort of uh, how to word this? Are we are we happy with sort of you know the casual viewers liking the novelty songs and then sort of mocking them afterwards? I feel like I've read a really poor sort of question there. But anyway, somebody makes sense of it for me. I have to say, like having done like um, many interviews with like uh, ABC and other Australian uh, networks when when the Eurovision season like starts in May, um, mm-hmm. they they all want to focus on the quirky songs and they all want to talk about those <laughs> and yeah. that's what the viewers want to hear about. Yeah. So always trying to add in like one or two of the ones I know are going to do well or everyone's talking about. Um, mm. But we do need to yeah, keep in mind that these viewers are really important. We need Ratings need to keep, keep up as, um, as the contest goes along and mm. uh, yeah, these quirky acts or whatever you want to call them are just as important as... Um, the really artistic ones as well. But that's what I think. Well, I also think it's important that um, I've realised that uh, kind of it's difficult to word questions on the go, but 
within that question you just I, posed. I, are you saying that I've done poor planning this evening? Maybe a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I was going to write a list and it's all gone wrong. Oh no, but um, <laughs> still, this is stuff that comes up quite regularly of which fan is better than the other. So we're creating a tier system of yeah. some fans are worth more and some fans aren't. And we're mm. saying, oh, well, if we're fans and, you know, we pay attention to this all year, then our songs are the ones that should matter. Well, why shouldn't it be the one who just happens to tune in on Saturday night? You know, why mm. are they any less of a fan or any less worthy of having their voice heard than anyone else? Totally. Ab- absolutely. I mean, I think there's been, I actually think that's that's a discussion for, a much more detailed discussion on, a, on another time, which I'd really love to have. There is this idea of of, of fan entitlement that the, the the person who the person who watched all twelve heats of the Moldovan uh, national final or whatever somehow has a more valid opinion than the person who just watches it on a, on a Saturday night. You know, I, I I totally agree with um, that. In in my mind, the the people who sit down and enjoy it on a Saturday night. I, I'm, you know, they are the people who who keep this contest going because we are the people in this chat tonight. We are a very small number of people, uh, incredibly knowledgeable and passionate people. But we we are not. If the audience was just was just us, this the, then the program would collapse very quickly. Honestly, I'm just happy that people who are not diehard fans like us actually vote. Like, um, mm. thank you for enjoying the contest with us. Um, mm. I'm just very happy. Like my partner, who's really not into Eurovision at all, he voted for Moldova that night as well. I'm just happy he did. I'm just happy my friends are interested in that. Um, I'm I'm not here to gatekeep, even though um, I don't listen to 21st century songs at all. Uh, but I'm happy that um people around me do like they don't have to be diehard fans they just gotta you know um if they enjoy it um that's that's just really good i just don't see why we should gatekeep that to be fair i'm just happy to you know just be like wow yeah i'm i'm really happy you like this song i also like it Mm. um no gatekeeping just enjoy it's for everyone and i think it comes back to what i said before that the saturday night viewer doesn't care that there was a jury vote or not on on Tuesday or Thursday, um, as as much as we get riled up about it. And again, we and I've done it as well. I'm guilty of that this morning, this afternoon. We've we've made a lot of assumptions and suppositions about how the the floodgates of novelty will open. Well, I, we, we we'll find out in May. And you know, I think Melody Fest is beginning to make its um, announcements, and they all seem fairly exciting from from what I've gathered. Um, so I think we just have to sort of wait and see what what happens. And I think, as as Mr. JDS said uh, earlier on, that the cream rises to the top, whatever the method. So I think that's a good place to leave it. And that was where we left it. So my thanks go to everyone who took part in that Twitter space that night. Uh, If you've enjoyed it, comment below. If you've got anything you want to add, any points, again, comment below. Like, share and subscribe. We'd really love to uh, hear what you guys think. Um, And hopefully we'll provide more content soon from Euroversity, the controversial Eurovision podcast.